This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you ever been trying to sleep and your thoughts just won't let you? Like they won't just shut up? Cognitively, you know sleep is good for you and you know you need it in order to feel better, but you just can't do it. Therapy could be just the thing to help you figure out what's making your brain fight against you. Personally, I love therapy. It's helped me put an end to a few unhealthy learned behaviors I was exhibiting. If you are considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's all online, so it can easily accommodate your schedule. Just complete a quick questionnaire to be matched with a licensed therapist in no time. If you don't love your therapist for any reason, you can grab a new one at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BPLP today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BPLP. Welcome to Black People Love Paramore, a podcast where we dive into the common and uncommon interests of Black people in order to help Black people feel seen. Please feel free to donate to the show at the link in the show notes. And please rate us and write us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Five stars only because we are five star bitches or Dio Gotti. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, subscribe, and all of the things. If you really like the show, join the Patreon. Patreon family is patreon.com slash black people love Paramore for bonus content. I'm your host, Sequoia. And today, joining me to talk about Golden Girls, we have a very special guest. He's a comedian, a TV writer, and host of the podcast, not just like any podcast, but the podcast, The Read, Kid Fury. Thank you so much for joining, Kid Fury. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you. Like, if you would have been like, you have to pay me to come on your show, I would have been like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> like, whatever you need me to do, I got you. Please. For sure. No, so I'm excited to, to have here. you. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything you want to tell the folks. Like, if you have <laughs> something specific that you want to say before we oh, jump. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I okay. Have, like... I'm I'm working on stuff, but I'm not here okay. for to promote anything okay. in particular. All Just right. having fun. To, but all right, all right, sounds good. Before, <laughs> if I think it's, I'm not let you know for sure. Great. Okay. Before we get into talking about Golden Girls, we have in my defense. In my defense is our segment where we bring one of our unpopular opinions and defend it for the audience. Mm-hmm. I have one this week. I don't always have one. Okay, but I do have one this week. Do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? You go first. Okay, send me off. On the drive here, I realized. Blinkers are not always necessary. It's not a requirement. Hmm. And maybe that's because I'm from here. But if I'm trying to get over, I don't really need to let you know that all of the time. Sometimes, but not all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because let me tell you something. They will try to stop you from getting over. If I let you know I'm trying to get over, now you're trying to get in the way. That's true. And that'll piss me off. That is true. There are a lot of petty drivers that simply react to that blinker by being Speeding like, mm-hmm. up? That, that is weird. Why would you do that? Okay, I see where you're coming Grow from. Grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that yeah, was not bad. It wasn't that bad, right? Yeah, that's yeah not, that's, like, that's okay. That mm-hmm. Sometimes they'd be egregious, so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I brought one with me. Uh, I you don't mind who this offends. In and out, not that great. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, I'm sick. In and out, <laughs> I'm sick. Is not that great. Wow, um, so hot. I think that y'all have hyped In and Out to a, a a place that is really unfathomable. <laughs> Uh, it's a fine burger. It's not bad by any means. <laughs> and I think that if you're comparing it to like, if you're from like some, like you a transient from like some flyover state or someplace where all you had is McDonald's yes. or Burger King or whatever, Certainly. and you compare it to In and Out, then it yeah, I'm, it's probably gonna blow your mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But just like as a bitch that eats burgers, mm-hmm. like on the reg at home and out, it's fine. Okay, it is fine. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. it. I'm like, what burger do you prefer? Like, what's like a fast food burger? You're like that one trumps it for sure. Um, I honestly can't think of a fast food burger right now that like I go up for. You're like, not I, like a Five Guys type of person. You know, Five Guys is fine. Okay. Also, okay. Yeah, I used to actually Tough eat crowd. a lot of Five Guys when I lived in New York City for a while, mm-hmm. but like. Right now, I feel like if I want a burger, I would probably go to like some like mom and poppy type place or just make it myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like fast food life yeah. <laughs> for, as part of the lifestyle. Yeah. If you've never had it out, you should try it. 
Um, but if your head doesn't explode, don't be shocked. It's fine. The main thing is, I really need you to focus on the burger. Like, please, I don't want to hear nothing about the fries. I know that I they're not good. <laughs> people, people always be like, the fries are like flaccid dicks. They're they don't not have good. any erection to them. And sure, the sauce is the draw. You throw the sauce on top of everything. Yeah, the animal style and you eat thing. the sauce. I really was more focused on the burger okay. than the fries okay. itself. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is serviceable. Yeah. But, Sir like, I was sitting with people who were, like, waiting to to see the fireworks go off in my eyes. Yes. Like, you you see Ratatouille? Yes. Like, when they were eating the cheese and, the and like, they were, like, waiting for me to explode. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I... what are we doing after this? Yeah. Anyways, moving forward. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Ooh, that came in hot. Yeah, that's, I knew. Yeah, that's not that's, it's, as a native. That one clears the room whew, when I say the, it. I am cleared. Oh, yeah, yeah. I absolutely am cleared. Okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Song of the week. Yes. I have one that I'm really excited about this week. Okay. It is an artist by the name of Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> okay. A little known oh, I don't artist. Know if you've ever heard of her? Uh, you know, she has a, a couple albums out. Mm -hmm. You know. For the girls, for the young girls. Yeah. A song called Get Him Back off the new album, Guts. Fantastic song. Yeah. Everything that I've ever wanted in an album, she gave me. I deserve that. That's cute. Mm -hmm. In the 2020s, I deserve that. Yeah. I used to get it all the time when I was a kid. And they stopped. They stopped serving us. Mm. And I'm happy that she's feeding the streets. Yeah, I see that. Um, I, I'm old. <laughs> I <laughs> I didn't know that she was like a, a Disney kid mm -hmm. until like a couple weeks ago, honestly. But I I I remember "Good for You" and thinking that was like a really catchy, cute pop song. Definitely. Um, I totally support her as someone who is apparently an enemy of Taylor Swift now. Same. Uh, so I'm I fuck with that. I think she's a great songwriter, and I actually listened to her to to this Guts album and was quite impressed. Yeah, it's, like it's. I get being transported back to like being in junior high school, high school, or something like that, and, mm -hmm. and just having that album you listen to on the bus. And mm -hmm. it's like, this is my life. Yeah, so that's it's cute. very much that. Yeah, it is hundred percent that. And I would like to just caveat the Taylor Swift thing. Taylor Swift is a topic that is often asked for me to do on this podcast, Interesting. and I have a hard time because I just not a fan. Pretty anti. Pretty vehemently anti at that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm going to keep this brief. But Olivia Rodrigo is a better songwriter than Taylor Swift. And I really want to emphasize that. Mm -hmm. If you listen to, what is the song? Is it Vampire? No, Vampire. Driver's License, her first song. Mm -hmm. Instead of just being like, I'm going to make a love song because I'm 16 and whatever. She's like, I'm going to use this device. I am going to talk about getting my fucking driver's license. You were supposed to be here, but you're not here. And I'm heartbroken. I'm torn up over that. You know who could never do that? You know who never did that? And we'll leave it at that. I'll, yeah. I'll, mm -hmm. And that's I, that. I have no disagreement mm -hmm. on this. Then. And, yeah. Yeah. Bad idea, right? Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic song. It's such a. It's a great song. I just tripped and fell into his bed. What? Fuck it. It's fine. Yeah. Like I love. Like her. I love I, it I, so yeah. much. She's I cute. So much. I really yeah. very enjoy cute. Her. Yeah. Very cute. Yeah, that's my song. Um, for me, I'm gonna say. Uh, so uh, this past week, I've been very uh, angsty, if that's the word. It's a lot mm -hmm. of, like Slipknot, Ooh. Uh, like System of Down, Corn, like I've been listening to like this week. metal. Um, but one of the songs uh, I'm gonna do two. Okay. One of the songs I'm very obsessed with right now is uh, Dochi's new song Pacer. Mm -hmm. It okay. reminds me I a lot of her it. single Crazy. Um, it's very like rock, very like lots of yelling and growling, and she's got like a very uh, catchy, like moshy type of hook to it. But then there's the rapping, the beat's great. I love that song. Mm -hmm. um, and she's one of the artists I'm very excited about these days. Um, she's special. But then another song I've been listening to a lot over the past couple of weeks is a song called Broke by a young lady named Angel J. Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe she's from Miami. Don't quote me. Mm -hmm. But it's like she's this gorgeous young black girl who has this cute melodic voice. And on this particular song, it just kind of like melds like... 
trap subject matter, just talking about broke niggas okay. over like grunge rock, like a medley type of a beat. So it's fun because it's a rock song, but the hook is just like, I don't care if you, you a broke ass nigga. Like it's like. If she don't saying, want no bro. Okay, okay. She said she don't want one. Nigga. Okay. Like, and I'm just like, any rock song where I can also say, say nigga. nigga? Never heard it before. I want it. I yeah. want that. Yeah. So that I'm excited great. for her. Yeah, I don't, I want people to get into that record because it has a lot of potential. What was her name? Angel J. Nelson. Angel J. And the song Nelson. is called Broke. broke. She's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. She says she don't care if you broke, but she don't want no broke. No, she didn't say she didn't care if you okay. broke. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, okay. Angel. I fuck the lyrics <laughs> yeah. up. She says, I don't care if you say that I'm a bitch. Oh. Don't care about yeah. you because I don't want no broke nigga. Period. I'm pretty sure that's the hook. Sorry, Angel. That sounds, okay. yes, aligned. That's better. I, I like that, yeah. Because I was like, that's not sitting right in my spirit. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I fucked it up. My spirit, yeah. <laughs> but okay, that's right. That's yeah. right, okay. For sure. All right. We can get into Golden Girls. I like the shirt. First of all, if you're watching this on YouTube, this says Sex in the City, but it's the Golden Girls on the shirt. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely. Also, I want to know, what's the one-to-one with that? Like, the character in Sex in the City and the characters in a... Like, if you had to align them... yeah. Um, so don't kill me because I'd be forgetting their names all the time. I've Harry is Sex and the City probably Dorothy. Okay. Uh Ryder, very into words and stuff. Also the like sort of leader of the pack with not so great luck and love. Mm -hmm. Um Charlotte, the ditzy one. Mm -hmm. Rose. Mm -hmm. Naturally. Um you know, you've got Miss Samantha? I think that's that sounds yes. I know one of them is called Samantha. Um, the sluttier one. Yes. Blanche. That would be Blanche. Naturally. And then uh I was gonna say the gay one. He's not gay on the show. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she is not. I haven't really watched the sequel. <laughs> she might be gay now. Sequel. Oh no. Um, but yeah, <laughs> then you have um my girl Sophia mm -hmm. would be I forgot her name, the redhead. Because okay. she usually has a lot of the quips. I really feel like that a it. lot of sh of shows yeah. with the four women, yeah. you could do this. Definitely. With. Absolutely. You could do it with Insecure. Yeah. You could do it with Sex and the City. You could do it with Living Single. Wait. Wait, that really is a trope that I never really thought about that much. Like the four female friend trope is like a real thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That tracks. Let me explain what Golden Girls is in case some of y'all don't know. This is straight from Wikipedia. I'm reading per usual. The Golden Girls is an American sitcom created by Susan Harris that aired on NBC from September 14th, 1985 to May 9th, 1992 with a total of 180 half-hour episodes spanning seven seasons. The show features an ensemble cast, revolves around four older women, three widows, one divorcee, sharing a house in Miami. The owner of the house is a widow named Blanche Devereaux. Mm -hmm who was joined by fellow widow Rose Nyland and divorcee Dorothy Zbornak. Yep. After they both responded to an ad on bulletin board of a local grocery store a year before the start of the series. In the pilot episode, the three are joined by Dorothy's 80-year-old widowed mother, Sophia, after the retirement home she had been living in burned down. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Okay, when did you start watching Golden Girls? Okay, so I technically started watching Golden Girls when it aired. Okay. Um, as a child, uh, when I was in elementary school or, or whatever the hell, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time, my maternal grandmother, uh, she lived with us for a bit. She was helping my parents out with, you know, me and my brothers. And so one of the things that she would watch after she would pick me up from school is go to girl. And I used to, like, I think as a child, I used to be like fascinated with why she thought this show with these old white women was so fascinating and why it yeah. cracked her up so much. And thinking back at it now, she's probably going into those years of her life at the time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, at the time, I just, like, the only thing that really, like, resonated with me as a kid watching Golden Girls is a very, the, the theme song and the part where B. Arthur, like, bites her. If you watch the opening, <laughs> there's a part from one of the episodes where Dorothy, like, bites her. She doesn't want to say something. I think her mama pissed her off. And she just, like, bites her her knuckles yeah. like that. And I was always like, why is this, like, woman biting her hand? <laughs> Um, but watching it as a fan was was college. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you um, went back for it. Yeah, yeah. One of my best friends uh, in college, Alan, 
was obsessed with the Golden Girls. He had watched it as a fan his whole life. And he mm-hmm. was like, no, you need to go back and watch the show. Yeah. So I went to a video place that, one of those, like, Sam Goody, one of those places is not open anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I bought the whole series, and I have watched all 180 uh, whatever episodes wow. of that show. Wow. Countless, Multiple times. Literally every night since I was in college. Oh, that's like your comfort show? Like what you go yeah. to sleep to type stuff? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, I literally that just show. took a break from it maybe a month or so ago. Because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, girl, like, let me just like <laughs> refresh <laughs> so some of these jokes will hit again. Because mm-hmm. I'm just reciting the episode word for word. I know it mm-hmm. backwards and forwards, yeah. I love when you get into a comfort show like that and it's just soothing. I like reciting it word for word. Honestly, that's why I like to watch stuff by myself. Right. I can't watch Golden Girls by myself. I need somebody else to laugh with me <laughs> because I just started watching it a week ago. So I've been making my boyfriend okay. watch it because I wanted to prepare for this episode, right? Okay. What a fucking treat. What a treat. It's brilliant. It's a magical show. The it way is. that it holds up startles me. It's, I was like, it's tremendous. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. When did this come out? Yeah. 1985. Yeah. It's 2023. I was like, I was waiting for something problematic, something, whatever. And you know, like there's little stuff every yeah, now there and then. Like, like a little jokes. stuff, you know, but I'm yeah. just like, damn, this holds up. Like these jokes are so relevant to today. It's scary. Why haven't we progressed more? I don't know. I don't like it. We don't want to. I think people are just lazy. But that's, you know, it's really beautiful how I think full and progressive that writer's room was. I need to know. It feels like a primarily female writer's room. I don't know. I don't know. But it feels like that when I'm watching it. Yeah. They covered so many topics throughout the entire series as well. Like, obviously, you're talking, you know, the show surrounds these women in a certain age of their life who are widowed or divorced mm-hmm. and trying to find love and all this. So there's like sex and dating and stuff like that. But there's also, you know, much heavier topics like AIDS and, and HIV, which was super serious and mm-hmm. a lot more prevalent of a topic at the time. Um, like, uh, drug addiction, gambling addiction, they have race, mm-hmm. like all kinds of stuff that the whole show covers really from beginning to end in ways that I thought even still to this day, like it's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. And yeah, the Alzheimer's, homelessness, like they really went out of their way. Homosexuality. Blanche has a brother who's gay and they like go back and forth. It could have easily fallen into something where it's just like, you know, technically kind of violent or, yeah, you know, yeah. counterproductive in a lot of Definitely. those ways. Yeah. And they chose to be one of probably the only shows at the time that was like, let's think about this a different way. Definitely. And also, it's hilarious. It's <laughs> like, it doesn't stand in the so way of funny. it being funny. No. Yeah. At all. Speaking of the racism angle, what was it, like 2020, they take off, they took off the blackface pissed. episode? I was pissed. Okay, so, you know, naturally I had to go and watch it, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, like, from what I'm reading in this article, it doesn't sound like it could have been that bad. So mm-hmm. it was even less bad than what was represented. It was funny. Right. Yeah. The episode is funny. The joke that they removed that episode for was, l- the, the joke was that blackface is bad. Right. It's like Rose being like, we're not really black people because they have this one is just mud, mud mask. Mask. Right. Yeah. Like, this is not blackface. Like, please understand. Right. This is not blackface. The joke, I don't, yeah. Like, what but. confusing. They just be jumping at anything. I think that I, I chalk that up to Hollywood's refusal to actually, like, get in the weeds I of agree. these discussions and do the work. They'd much rather just be like. I <laughs> you know, agree, like, yes. That helps no one. But they put the fucking episode back because most fans are like, girl, you missed the point. Put the shit back. Yeah, yeah stop playing with us. And it's one of my favorite episodes. It's got the most black people in it. 100%. Yes. It's so good. It, that was a really good episode. I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed that one. This is a slight tangent. This reminds me of, and let me know if you disagree because I don't know. Kim Kardashian. Oh, God. <laughs> Where is this going? She dressed up as like Aaliyah a few years ago Jeez. for Halloween. I remember that. And everybody was like, I don't know. She she ended up apologizing. I didn't even see any response to it, but she ended up apologizing for it. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I also really dislike Kim Kardashian overall. Um, 
I felt like there was so much that she needed to apologize for, but not that. <laughs> like, I'm like, baby, every time you put the cornrows in your hair, every time that you lie about having plastic surgery when little girls are having all this body dysmorphia and all this shit, and you don't apologize for none of that shit. You dress up as Aaliyah. You didn't do blackface. <laughs> you didn't have no cornrows, nothing. You had a straight black wig. You wear that shit all the time. And you had on uh, an outfit. Why are you apologizing? Uh, uh, Why are you apologizing? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's the same. They they consistently miss the mark. Miss. They, you know. You know they absolutely. And I'm just like, it feels like the same thing. Any type of heat blowback that's easy to apologize for, you like take it down, sweep mm -hmm. it, whatever. You're not in the weeds. You're not quite understanding what we're talking about. Thus, you're not preventing it from from happening again. again. And as we see, it keeps happening again and again. Anyways, that's right. neither here nor there. Can you rank your favorite characters in order? Oh, for the for just the four, just for the, for the four girls. Dorothy's my favorite. Flat okay, out. she's always been my favorite. Yeah. From like I said, my, she's the one I have the first memory of her biting her head, but just her sarcasm, mm -hmm. her wit, like her comebacks are. Fire, like the only person who really could go toe to toe with her is her mama. And that's probably why her mouth Definitely. is so lethal in the first place. So I would say, honestly, Dorothy. Yes. Then I'm going to say Rose. Okay. Wow. And I'm going to say Rose is my favorite because she's like the mom or the grandma that you would. Want like if you had to if if your grandma lived in that house definitely you would hopefully wanted to be Rose definitely she's gonna have a ton of food made for before you even get there so she's so sweet she's so like kind she goes out of her way for people yeah um you know when she does say something dumb it's really hilarious and usually kind of endearing sometimes <laughs> it's like oh my god Rose shut the fuck up. yeah <laughs> um but the reason I would put her second is because. You might have known. You definitely should notice this by now. When it comes to competition, yeah, Rose becomes a different person. Okay, have did see that when she's competing, and it could be for nothing. Yes. Like it could, it could be for money, or it could yeah. be for a sticker. Yeah, when it comes to like <laughs> not a sticker, competing, Rose gets lethal. Yeah. Like, and she will like. She's actually had a couple of moments where she's where she ate the girls up with some one liners. Yeah. Where they don't really quite expect it from her. Yeah. And she'll just be like, so Rose is a little, a little hidden threat. Underrated. She's a little, a little okay. silent killer. Uh-huh. Um, then Sophia and then Blanche. And it's not no shade I'm to Blanche. I'm taking it back. <laughs> it's not. I love all of them. Okay. Okay. I love all of them. But like. Sophia obviously fucking hilarious. She yeah. always is saying the thing that nobody in the room is saying. She actually yeah. reminds me the most of my grandmother that oh. introduced me to the show because that's how my grandma is. Um, and then I love Blanche because she's hilarious and shit like that too. But Blanche has Blanche has had moments in the show where I'd be like, why don't they just beat her ass? Mm -hmm. Like, she, like mm -hmm. she will just unsolicited, unwarranted, just say some mean shit. Definitely. Or like shady shit just for the the purpose of making herself feel better. Definitely. Like, she swears she finer than him. And that she better than him. There's one line in particular where she's like, she's like something about her being younger. And then she's like, oh, she's like, oh, I'm far younger than, than you. And prettier. <laughs> and she's like... Not that that has anything to do with it, but I just am. And she like she just would be like, Ooh. she would shit on them all the time for no reason. Yeah, there's this episode in the last season where Dorothy wasn't like uh, getting out. She was kind of you know at home feeling lonely, and so Blanche was like, "Come with me to my favorite, you know, my favorite bar, you know, whatever." And she goes to the bar to get to hit on all the guys and like feel like that that girl, like yeah. that diva. Yeah. And then Dorothy ends up, she's very shy. She makes friends with the guy who plays the piano and she starts to sing. And Ooh. the whole bar falls in love with her for her singing. And so then Blanche becomes a full on <laughs> hater and like makes a fool of herself because Dorothy started to get a little bit of attention at this bar. Like, I love Blanche because she's great. Yeah. All of the characters literally are flawless and have fantastic stories. They do. 
Um, but if I had to order them, yeah. <laughs> Blanche has just had way too many moments where she has been not a great friend. That is super fair. Yeah. And in the show about friendship, I can definitely see Blanche as being the primary issue with regard to friendship yeah. in the show. There have been moments where she's been a great friend. Uh, of course. And been, you know, but there, she's usually the one where it's like, girl, what are you thinking? Like, why would you say that out of your mouth right now? You see season two where she got all of them arrested? Yes, I did just see that. <laughs> I looked up and I said, why are these old women behind bars? I'm confused. Because Blanche is fast. You, that's what it is. Okay, so if I had to order them, just, you know, based on my limited experience... I have Dorothy as my first because naturally mm -hmm. I have Blanche as number two. Okay. But let me explain. Okay. Sure. I would love Blanche to. is dedicated to the whole phase. Okay. It's not a phase for her, it's a lifestyle. Period. And I would love for that to be me. It's not, I have a man. Mm -hmm. But if I did not, Blanche. Absolutely. Absolutely blanching it up. I appreciate that about her. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a face. It could be your lifestyle. She's not ashamed of it. She's not. Nobody can tell her nothing. And really, like, as the show progressed, mm -hmm. they, again, for a show that came out in the 80s, they were very, like, pro-ho. Mm -hmm. Like, they made being a slut, like... Fine. They were. They, you know, it was kind of shocking. Like, Again, I'm like, I wasn't expecting it. When I turned it on, I was shocked. She literally has a line where they find out. I don't want to spoil things you may not have seen, but oh, no, they, please, find a, they find out a they find out a secret about uh, Rose's past. Okay. And <laughs> there's a moment where uh, Blanche starts to feel like threatened oh. by Rose having, you know, oh, a little home, having man. you maybe had ho a home moment or something. And <laughs> Blanche literally has a line where she says to herself, "I'm the biggest slut," <laughs> 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 like, like defeated. And I love that. I love that. I love that. That's this show in the '90s was like, yeah, "I'm the slut." The fuck? That, that is that from so me. funny. Awesome. I love this show. What a time! Wow, yeah. what a time! There's also an episode that I watched where uh, Dorothy's dating someone, or maybe it's Rose. I think it's Dorothy dating someone, and they come on to Blanche. And they have to, like, Blanche is trying to tell Dorothy. Mm -hmm. It is Dorothy. It's right? Dorothy. Yeah. yeah. She's trying to tell Dorothy, like, you know, your man did some slick shit while mm -hmm. you was gone. And Dorothy's like, you're a slut. I don't know why that was so funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> In 1986, I was yeah. like, oh, slut been used for this long? And like, they really didn't say it on TV. Like, no. On yeah, TV so I'm either. like, yeah. slut. Wow, I thought there would be other word choices. Mm-hmm. In 85, but no, it was slut. And I like it because I still, you know, employ that word as well myself. Yeah. And not a derogatory sense, in the good sense. But yeah. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. So who's your three and four? Oh, I forgot. Sophia and then Rose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Personal. Okay, so we just have Rose and Yeah, and just just yeah. that switched a little bit. So I was gonna say who's your least favorite, but you it's hard to pick a least favorite. But yeah. Rose really is They're my least all favorite. So great. My least favorite is uh Michael. Fair. <laughs> Dorothy's the ex, the son. Ex, oh, the hunt, the son. Dorothy's yes, yes. son. Yeah, I mean, Stan is the worst too. Yeah. But Michael? Yeah. <laughs> Michael's Bornek is one of the worst people on the scene. He is so ungrateful. He's so spoiled. Mm. Every time he come over the house, he wants something. Mm. He's like, he's just such a dickhead. <laughs> like, I don't know how Dorothy raised that. As, as pop off at the mouth? I don't, yeah. I don't know how she came Because up. that's her little baby boy. She spoiled him. Felt. That's it. Understood. I think the only time I've seen Michael is in the Mixed Blessings episode mm -hmm. where he brings home the black girl mm -hmm. who is old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the issue. So I haven't seen him be a brat quite He'll be yet, back. But I'm sure he'll come back. He'll be back. And act ass as, yes. as the boys like to. Which golden girl do you think you are? Yeah, I definitely, I think I, I identify the most with Dorothy. Mm -hmm. I feel like I also love words. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, um, I, I, I definitely think I reside in the realm of sarcasm more often than not. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm also like fiercely loyal to my friends. Uh, and have <laughs> like the worst luck with love out of all of them. Mm, mm -hmm. So I definitely think I'm Dorothy with a smidge of Sophia. Okay. Okay, okay. Yes. I feel that. I also think I'm Dorothy. 
but primarily because Dorothy can't hold her facial expression. So anytime something like dumb is going on, it's going to be plastered all over her fucking face. <laughs> and I, I'm really trying to work on it. I'll be trying to, you know, pull the facials together. Yeah. I'm not as quick to say something as Dorothy is. <laughs> but you going to know that I have a yes. thought if I have a thought. That is a good point. Yeah. And and I want to be Sophia. Sophia is just, she means what she says. Yeah. She says what she means. She be straight at your neck all the mm. time. But I do want to be a little bit more of a Blanche at the end yeah. of the day. Just a little bit more shameless. Yeah. A little bit more. That's the beauty of the character. It's not even just, because a lot of the... The men that she, you know, dated or slept with or stuff, you were off camera. She mm-hmm. would be like just coming in from a date or going out to a date mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, there's the time where she is like, they're trying to get signatures, I think, for the tree that they wanted to save. Yes, I saw that episode. And Blanche comes in and she got one signature. <laughs> and Dorothy is just like, you only got one signature. You've been out this time, you only got one signature. And Blanche is like, give me some time to freshen up. I'll get you another one. <laughs> Lady B, she's just like, I, the beauty of her sluttiness, yeah. quote unquote, is that... There was no shame in it. Mm -hmm. And it was not written for you to feel like she should be Mm -hmm. ashamed. She was just very free with her sexuality. And I thought that was... That really is something admirable for any age. It but is. yeah, like you said, if I'm in my 50s or whatever, 60s, and I'm single, yeah, yeah. girl, that's what I'm going to want. 100%. <laughs> also, I was shocked when I learned that these women were supposed to be in their 50s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it felt like mid 60s at the earliest yeah and i can't tell that's just because styles have changed and so i'm looking at like these hairstyles you know and i'm like oh Mm -hmm. this is like an old person's hairstyle yeah yeah yeah. but yeah i was was thoroughly confused i'm like not these ladies supposed to be younger than my mama that's what i'm saying like this don't make no damn sense right that's the gag i try not to think about that i was like i'm not quite understanding i'm like i'm gonna blink and be a golden girl like i swear like 50s is Mm, I'm more than halfway there. (gasps) Oh no, I'm about to throw myself into an existential crisis right now. Yeah, I try. Please. (laughs) Please. Wow. Yeah. How creepy. That's the beauty of the show. It'll forever be relevant. Mm -hmm. It really is super relevant. Oh my God. And I didn't know that all of them were gone. I knew Betty White, obviously, but like in researching, I was really taken aback to find out that all of them are gone. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing is they passed. Like, be back to back. I saw. Which was so scary. Yeah. I believe the first person to pass was Estelle. That sounds right. I think Estelle passed first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was just like, the next year, I think it may have been B. And then the next year, I think it was, uh, was um, I'm sorry, Rue. Rue. And so, like, me and my best friend... <laughs> My same best friend that like obsessed over Golden Girls. That next year, we're just like, God, please, please no, please just hold on to her. But you know, Miss Betty White held on she for held a the good hell on amount of time, and she's the oldest. That's wild. Also, everything about it is wild, she, crazy. She looked good. Mm-hmm. She did look good, and she looked good the whole time because she looked that age. Yeah, at ninety nine, the entire time. Yeah. But there was a, a lot of, even um, B. Arthur was older than Estelle Getty. Which is wild. Yeah. They put makeup Estelle's on her. Estelle's going to play Sophia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and B is going to play older. Dorothy. Mm-hmm. God. Mm. Yeah, they was playing. I don't know. The TV age stuff magic, Golden Girls. Child. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. But I really like the way that they portrayed friendship on Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. I, this is, this is. Like, who is who doesn't love friendship? But I really love friendship. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm a friendship girly, like, for real. I'd be like, no, I love you guys That's to cute. pieces. Yeah. And they seem to have that bond going on. And I find, at least from what I observe of folks within that age group, friendship doesn't seem to be their focal point right now. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, And I feel like the millennial generation and younger is starting to put emphasis on friendship as well as romantic relationships. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to me. And so it's really heartening to see that taking place in 1985 with mm-hmm. this group of middle-aged women too. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> so I can have this deep, deep romantic platonic friendship Yeah, later on too. Even when one of them like found a man mm-hmm. and was like, 
you know, I'm going to leave or whatever. She was like, you guys come move with it. Like, they they oh, never God, wanted to separate. That. Yeah, I, that was in the last season, right? Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that but and I was like... I think there was a moment where where Blanche had was, like, nearly getting married or something. And yeah. she was thinking about moving. And she was like, well... You guys could just move in with me. And Rose was all about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> and Dorothy was like, bitch, what the fuck? I look like moving into another house with you. I'm old. Like, but they always wanted to stay together. Yeah. The last episode is like, I cry every single time I watch it because mm -hmm. of that theme of friendship and how they like tie it together and the funniness of them hugging constantly. Shit. Yeah. It is definitely like a a good friendship show, but you make a good point of like, it. I guess by virtue of them all living in the house together, yeah, that kind of helped it. But definitely, yeah, older folks, yo, yo, go out with your friends. You know what I mean? Like, link yeah. up with your friends. Maybe you know, get roommates if y'all. You know, I know a couple people are widows and divorcees. Mm -hmm. You know, why not? Why not yeah. live together? I really do want to live in a compound with my friends, like with our partners or not, like, mm -hmm. whatever works. I just moved out of my old apartment with a girl who I lived with for 10 years. She's, like, a sister to me. Oh. Shout out, Tommy. Love you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was moving to move in with my boyfriend, I was like, I mean, we could just. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I definitely understand the Golden Girls in that because why would I leave my favorite person just for another mm. favorite person? You know, we could just. Yeah. I'm a, a Jamaican-American uh, <laughs> youngster, and uh, Jamaicans are very that. Mm -hmm. Like, let's all just be, let's live in the house. <laughs> you know, like, yes. literally, my, when I was born, I lived uh, with my parents in my paternal grandmother's home. And then when my parents got their own home, mm -hmm. it literally, to this day... One block over. One block I over. I love that. My whole life, my grandma lived a block over. If I stood on my roof, I could see her house. And then now, my other grandmother moved into the house right next door. I'm obsessed. <laughs> like, they, it, everybody obsessed. live. My mom's best friend lived down the street. It, every, it, yeah, everybody is just like... Because community. Why not why live not? next door? If I need some sugar, if somebody's trying to kill me... Run up the street. You right there. I'm with it. You're not going to get me, baby. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> what is it? If if you big, then we jump in you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we don't do... We don't shoot bear ones around yeah. here. Yeah. No, that's a really good one. Okay, I have a one gotta go for you that I think is going to be hard for you. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. You let me know. If you could only, if okay, if you had to get rid of one of these shows, you could never watch it again in your life. Okay. Golden Girls, mm -hmm. Martin, Daria. Which one are you killing? I'm going to throw Daria out the window, Damn. and it's really... It's really not even close. Damn. And I love Daria. <laughs> oh, yeah. My Instagram icon is, is a Daria. version of Daria. Mm -hmm. I'm upset. Like, I love that show. It's another show I actually got into late later. Like, oh. I started watching it in college also. Mm -hmm. And it was because I think I just, it just randomly had an interest in checking it out. Mm -hmm. And I told my friends, oh, I'm going to check out Daria. I've never seen it. And my friends were like, you've never seen a show about you? <laughs> Like, not you're Daria. How no. have you never seen a show before? <laughs> they were right. Um, but yeah, just obviously Golden Girls is like my comfort show, my go to sleep show. Mm -hmm. And Martin is also just too ingrained into who I am. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. As a, a comedian, as a black millennial, yeah. <laughs> just they're... That's not one I could just not watch again over right. Daria. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I can't. Damn, so Daria not hitting enough. Nah, I love it. And you know what? Hopefully we'll still get that um that show. Yeah. Was it live action? Trace, no, I think it's supposed to be animated. Okay. That yeah. Tracy Ellis Ross is doing. Mm-hmm. 
I hope that we'll get that. Who knows? You might get like a, a, a Daria cameo or some shit like mm-hmm. that in this new adult world that Jody's living in. That would be great. Oh my God, I forgot that it's supposed to be starring Jody. Mm-hmm. I'm really fire? excited about that. They better put fire underneath that goddamn show. I want to see it. I really need it. Like, it's, Tracy, please. Yeah, it's been in production. Please for make a while. sure. Yeah, I need that. And I wonder who they're going to cast as Jody. Is she is. Like she, Tracy. Oh, she, yeah. Oh, it's animated. Duh. Yeah, Tracy's okay. gonna do She's the, gonna voice, the voice Jody. Yeah. Jody. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. I really want to see it. So I that see. could be my little replacement if I'm throwing Daria out the window. Right. You'll be good I'm with Jody. Not clearing Martin or, <laughs> or Golden Girls. <laughs> oh. Them gotta go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Now, can we talk about the Miami of it all? Because the course. show is set in Miami. You yeah. are from Miami. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I haven't seen too much take place externally in the show like i haven't really seen too many external shots anything of the sort does it feel miami to you no it doesn't just feels like inside no in home i mean there's like a there's like a a vibe that it kind of evokes yeah uh with some of the design and stuff and there are definitely like a couple of of references and lines and stuff then you know they talk about maybe collins avenue or mm-hmm. for you know so they'll, they'll mention places like that but obviously it wasn't shot there and a lot of the stuff that you see isn't really doesn't really remind me of of anything miami like mm-hmm. um so yeah and that doesn't really feel like Miami to me, yeah. but I did like to have fun when I, you know, went back and started watching it in college, imagining what part of Miami they would have lived in. Yeah, and I, I, I would guess it's like Old Cutler. Okay. <laughs> For that, that means nothing to you, but okay. like a kind of like a ducked out sort of old money. Okay, section of South Miami. Got it. Would be my guess it, or Coconut Grove. Okay, okay, it gave. Orlando to me. That's fair. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'd imagine older folks who are retiring and, you know, go to Orlando. And so I was shocked when they kept being like, you know, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. I was shocked when they kept being like Miami. I'm like, oh. Wrote a whole song about it. You know? Like, (laughs) this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of songs. Okay. I looked up a list of, like, the best theme songs um, on television in general. Yeah. Golden Girls, I think, was number 38 on what? that list. <laughs> is that way too, like, that far away from number one? Low. <laughs> I, th- I thought you might have been like eight. No. Seven. No. Who, okay, so who do they, who do they Let feature? Me see. Let me see. MASH? What is it? Like, they did have stuff like that on there. It oh, was like, girl. it was the Andy Griffin show, I think, was number one. I'm, that's, yeah. Like, duh. I'm not Best surprised. TV show theme songs of all time. They had a bunch of stuff on here that was a surprise, but I was surprised that Golden Girls was only number 38. I'm like, especially the remix that we now have from. Right. Um, our, our now gospel. Yeah, our gospel remix of which, it. I'm like, that's not surprising. Eight. It, hey, it goes so well. That's, we do that shit. It makes time. so much. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Anything. That's shocking. But yeah, 38. Yeah. They got WandaVision on here. Three's Company at number. WandaVision ain't got no damn li- Like, what, what are they talking about? What are you talking, talking about? about? Any jingle before the damn shit starts? Like, okay. I was literally just about to say, I bet it's, it's like Law and Order or some shit that ain't got no goddamn singing or nothing. Oh, did they have Law and Order on here? Or like. That would make sense. Sopranos theme or something. Like they that. did have stuff like that. Three's Company is number 98, and that pissed me off, honestly, because I feel like that's a great thing. 98? Egregious, right? I'm like, no. This person's a liar. Like, you're fucking lying. Stop playing with me. That's one of the most recognizable people who don't, who've You'll never see seen that show. That, that life song. is a ball again. Laughter is calling for you down at our rendezvous. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. Nine, wow okay yeah new girl number 94 what that's barely a theme song i'm like that's cute but like so you put new girl at 94 and yeah threes the person or persons rolling stone that, they okay. just wanted to anger people mm-hmm, that's of course yeah that's that's generally the angle number 92 is all that i'm gonna leave it at there leave it at that because that pissed me off too this person they should be in jail that's wrong jail, jail. prison jail and jail and like jail Several, th- yeah, this shit just not making no sense to me. Like, that is crazy. But yeah, that theme song, wow. Golden Girls theme song just lifts my spirits immediately. Again, it's about friendship. It's about friendship. Yeah. And I love friendship. It's a song about being a friend. But it's also one of the pettiest songs mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Ever it. So fucking funny. It, that is such a good point. It absolutely is so fucking petty. It's beautiful in its performance, in its composition, and subject matter. Yeah. But she's also like, I'm the type of friend that if you <laughs> threw a party <laughs> and invited every, every single person, not just all your friends, Mm-mm. everybody that you know, no, 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 no. you would no. see that the biggest gift would be from me. Mind you, everybody you know is in this bitch. <laughs> everybody. Your mama, your daddy, your, mom, your cousin, right. Don't matter. your kids, your grandmama, everybody you know everybody. is in this bitch. The biggest gift in this motherfucker, I got it. Yep. Plus there's a card attached to it that says, thank you for being a friend Period. to me. Absolutely. That is so petty. Yeah. No, it really is. I, I care about you more than your mama. It. Yep. Not all of your friends. You invited everyone. Everyone you knew. that you know. <laughs> Like, none of them bitches could compare to the type of friend that I am. I don't am. care who you know. That is sickening. I don't care who you invite. We don't talk about that aspect of the fuck. song enough. Yeah. But it no. has always resonated with me. Like, this motherfucker wrote, no, but like, in, in, of everyone you have yep. in your life. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That is crazy. Them the friends I like. Yeah. That's, that's the type awesome. of friendship I like. Absolutely. Be petty like that. Yes. Let them know. Yes. Let them know that what is we what have. friendship is about. Let them know what we are about. Yes. Okay. It's not a joke over here. It's very fucking serious. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have anything else about Girls and Girls. <laughs> Do you have anything that you would like to say that? Um, I would just say that, you know, I'm someone who has always, always, always obsessed with sitcoms like mm-hmm. not just the golden girls not just martin i grew up watching all that my mm-hmm. brother and me uh the parkers mm-hmm. Moesha, mm-hmm. Uh, you know i mostly you know black sitcoms mm-hmm. but i got into you know some of the other girls every now and then yeah. you know i've watched gilmore mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> but um yeah i would just say if you've never watched the golden girls um, give it a chance. I you pick an episode. You don't even have to start from the beginning. You, if you really don't. don't. To. You could just pick one. Um, the dynamics of the characters are pretty straightforward, mm-hmm. right? Right away, so you won't be super confused. A lot of the episodes are pretty standalone, so you don't lead, like. You could just dive in. Although, I think the first two seasons might be the best. Honestly, yes. Season two is just stellar. Honestly. Like, Absolutely. Season two is fantastic. If you're confused about where to dive in, Hulu has a... They do. Hulu has like a section that's like a short binge Mm -hmm. where they lay out just like a few episodes, something like 12, 14 episodes you can watch. Mm -hmm. And that's a good place to start. I definitely started there and then I went back and watched a little bit more of the last season, a little bit more of the first season. And yeah, that first season really ate. I started to get into the second season. I was like, yeah, this really ate. And when I jumped into season seven, it was... You know, it was obviously still great, but, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. They had know. been doing it for a long, long time, time at that point. And I think that, like, comedy in the sitcom space mm-hmm. changed mm-hmm. a lot from the mid-'80s to the 90s. Yeah. yeah that, like, by that time, Family Matters is on, Full House is on, yeah. Step by Step. Like, all mm-hmm. of those things are... So, like, the sort of, like... Uh, multi-cam sitcom uh, dynamic changed a bit and I feel like Golden Girls changed with it. Yeah. But it still did have some zingers Mm -hmm. in those last two seasons that were like, oh yeah, these are (laughs) same girls. Yeah, absolutely. But my favorite seasons are probably seasons two and four. Okay. Uh, So I would say, but like I jump into literally any one of them. I can't tell you how many people I know who are like, I watched the Golden Girls for the first time. I just thought, it was just, you know, show about some Same. old white girls, but it's uh, fucking hilarious. Same. It's very, very funny. Like, I grew up watching a lot of sitcoms, too, like you mentioned. And I watched lots of the white ones, obviously lots, all the black ones, damn near. Um, Golden Girls is different. <laughs> it's funnier. It's simply funnier, which it's, confuses the fuck out of me. It holds up in 2023. It's funnier. It knows what it is. It knows what it is trying to say. Yeah. And it just does it. So expertly. It's the reason why people still stand it to this day and mm-hmm. watch it. And like I said, it'll be forever relevant because 
when you're a young person, like I was in my early 20s being introduced to it, I got it and thought it was hilarious. And I imagine if God allows me to become Sophia Petrillo's age, I'll be like, it's even funnier now because I'm living this. My fucking nursing home also burned down. That's wild. Also, how y'all letting nursing homes burn down with old people in it? It was her fault. Don't be... Oh. Oh, she burned it. Go back home. Oh. There's a... Well, it wasn't... There's an episode about it. Okay. There's more to the story. Okay. <laughs> than what so that feels on up brand. Said. Yes. I I definitely could could believe that. It okay. Might be season six that they do that. She almost got went to jail because of that. Wow. She but said I, think I Sophia don't like almost it. went to jail a couple times. She said it felt like jail. I, that makes sense because I remember in the first episode she was like, "Yeah, they got me in this nursing home. It's not fun. It feels like yeah. jail." She hated it. She burned that shit down. Okay. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> yes. The, I told you I didn't want to be here and you put me here anyway. So now everybody's going to pay for that. Um, Gotta watch that. <laughs> my favorite sitcom when I was young of the white variety mm-hmm. was Roseanne. Mm. And I felt like Roseanne was so well written. It really was. And so fucking funny. And Golden Girls is really equally as funny to me, which is shocking because I've been watching Roseanne since I was mm-hmm. seven or something. Yeah. And to turn on this show that I've never laid my eyes on and for it to be equally as funny, I was enamored just immediately. I'm like, mm. wow, Golden Girls is really special. Yeah. 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 Roseanne was was one that I felt like I would sometimes it would be late and it would come on. Yes. And like if I was I'd just like sneak and still be up. Mm-hmm. And I would like catch a couple episodes of it. And I thought it was like. I did think that it was also a show, even as a young person, Mm -hmm. that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And, like, because of the writing. Yeah, the writing was really good. Yeah, And I will never forget to this day, like, yes, Roseanne went off the deep end. Lost her. And all that stuff. Goddamn, yeah. Um, But there is one, the episode where their son didn't want to kiss that black girl. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) the, like, difference between the two people, because it was, like, the show is about white trash. Yes. And it wears that on its sleeve. Yes. Um, But that line where Roseanne says to her son, black people are just as good as us. And anybody who doesn't think so is a bunch of banjo picking, cousin dating, <laughs> <laughs> like embarrassments to respectable white, white trash, trash like us. Period. I f- like when I first heard that line, mm-hmm. I was like, "This show can have it." Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> in the same breath as you say, you're you're saying. Black people deserve just some, the same amount of rights and respect as everybody else. Warren. And if you don't think so, you are disrespecting white trash like us. Like us. That actually go out in the world and, and act like we got some sense. So much packed in there. Like So much packed in there! White trash and making it a joke Eight. is delicious. Eight. Yeah. Eight it up. Said I'm nothing like you bitches. Yeah. I don't know what y'all on. We're not doing that. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like I said, it's a shame how the story ended. But at the time... Uh-huh. Damn. And also a great intro. Yeah. No lyrics, but also a great because classic. Because busting out the banjo, I don't even know what. It was what like a body rolly kind of, yeah. I think it was like a saxophone. Dun, 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 dun. It was just all, yeah. it was just like a vibey <laughs> theme song. Yeah. That one was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Theme songs mean a lot to me too. That's another yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. I kind of want them back. Really bad. Really bad. Actually, I've been talking about this all over the place. I'm like, please. Why aren't we investing in the theme song? Do you know that will keep somebody like having that on their screen? Mm-hmm. You give me a good theme song, I'll give you the first episode of the show. Because I mean, these these networks are 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 commissioning AI to build them a minute and a half long intros anyway. The intro to Game of Thrones is about five minutes long. Anti. So why can't we just? <laughs> <laughs> so Anti-tar why that. can't we just have theme song? Just give us a theme song back, please. Yeah. But I see a lot of black people like Golden Girls. Yeah, it feels free. like just as I look on Twitter. Look through stuff. Black people are like, I don't know why, but them girlies, they got it for exactly. us. Mm-hmm. Do you have any theories as to why black people in particular resonate with these four white ladies? Um, because I think that in uh, for you know the all the white of it, yeah. Um, there's just so much relatability. There is in those characters. Um, and like I said, uh, a lot of us 
probably have parents or grandparents that watched it when we were young yep. and adored it because it's like, yeah, my kids don't call enough. And when they do, they are fucking ungrateful. Or yes, my I am divorced and I can't stand my damn husband. He's yeah. shit. Or my husband passed and I miss him. Yeah. Or like, yes, I have that homegirl who like still be drinking in her 60s and I have mm-hmm. to cuss her out because she be trying to be fa- yeah. like <laughs> they're white. But you know something else? Dorothy and Sophia are Italian. And those are yes. black and white people walking around. Yes. The so that might also have Absolutely something to do with that. It. Yeah. The whole nature of family and how fiercely they yeah. like defend each other and shit like that. That might also be an <laughs> aspect I didn't consider, but I definitely feel that. Some of uh, so much of it is is very relatable, mm-hmm. the family and friend aspect of it, especially. Yeah. It really is. I definitely get that. Wait, yes, I forgot the Sophia and Dorothy are Italian. Mm-hmm. And then Blanche is Southern. I'm not positive they ever say where she's from. from she's just from okay. Mm-hmm. And then I never. I don't know what that was going on. With Rose, where's she? Rose is from Minnesota. Okay, that She's tracks. From that's what a I don't place know. called Saint Olaf, which is not a real place. <laughs> but if you watch the show, every time they reference it, it's like some crazy story about some about the weirdest town where everybody is dumb. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> like, She's from a dumb town. That's why. She's from like a town full of She's dumb like people. That. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes she do be getting on. And she's like Swedish, I guess, or whatever. They reference her like Swedish heritage a lot. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 I always wonder why black people like so much, but upon watching it, I'm like, yes, this tracks. This feels familiar. Yes. I definitely see my mom Mm -hmm. and Dorothy specifically. My mom got a mouth. Dorothy be quick with it. And so, yeah. And it's hilarious. It's and it's really fucking funny. <laughs> yes. Thank you for introducing me to Golden Girls because I wouldn't have known anything about it for real. I'm glad anyone mm-hmm. has that to say to me. Mm-hmm. They need to put you on payroll. Watch it. They need yes, to please. Mm-hmm. Or just let me go to the museum or what, something. Whatever it takes. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for coming on, Kipiri. Thank you for having me. I'm yeah. so glad that I got to come. It was like this. so great having you. Like I'm very excited about this. I can't wait for people to hear it. I was going to say let people know what you have coming up, but if you don't, you know, if you don't want Yeah, to. you know, man, we do a podcast every week called The Read. You might um, it. It's about as old as Sophia Petrillo. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you can find it where you listen to podcasts and stuff. Follow us. Uh, this is The Read on Instagram. I think Twitter is the same name. And uh, look out for fun stuff to come. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on 10 years. Thank you. That's wild. It's crazy. That is wild. Every week. week. First of all, my show comes out every other week because I can't fucking manage it. I don't know how the hell y'all be doing it. I don't either. But congratulations on that for but 10 fucking fun. years straight. Yeah. It, I mean, it seems very fun. You can, yeah. you can definitely get the vibe. When you're listening, it's just crazy to life. think of how much we have talked about who the fuck knows what for so long. I like, swear. Sometimes people like tweet me like, "Oh, you said blah blah blah," and I'm like, "When did I say that?" Mm-hmm. I've deleted episodes because some the people told me I'm that I said that. that. I'm like, Listen. I don't remember saying that. I do feel that way, but I didn't want y'all to know that I felt that way. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'm, getting I'm just like, I here. give it to God at this point. Right, like, God, I'm letting it go. I haven't said a lot. Per usual, you can find me at BPLP Pod across Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can email me at blackpeoplelovehairmore at gmail.com with episode recommendations, hate mail, feedback, or anything else. Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>